Hi lovelies, Esther here with a very special unboxing tonight. Um, yeah, I've actually already broken into the box and extracted the tarot deck that I want to share with you guys. I feel really fortunate. Um, about a year ago, um, a member of the tarot community reached out to me, I think through YouTube, Nancy. Hi Nancy, if you're watching. And um, we started communicating um, now and again about decks. Um, uh, decks that she'd seen for sale and that she thought I might be interested in and a lot of it dealing with two particular decks, the Aquarian Tarot and the Morgan Greer, Greer Tarot. And I think it was Nancy who first told me I, I knew nothing about um, the Morgan Greer Tarot that came out, I don't know when, Brant of Moon Baby, you know all this stuff, um, so share your wisdom. I think it was, was it the second um, edition, the second printing of the Morgan Greer deck that came out with black borders. Now, it's really rare. Um, it's hard to come by. I actually don't know how rare it is, but I've only seen it a few times and have never been able to get a copy of it. Um, but the other day, a couple weeks ago, um, I got uh, notified by, two, by both by Brant and by Mary um, about a posting that had occurred on Facebook. And I had completely missed it. And it was for Morgan Greer with Borders. And I just, the generosity of you guys. It's just, it's beautiful. Um, the knowledge that's shared, the excitement that's shared. I mean, we sometimes joke about, you know, how we all enable each other. And that's true. That's true. <laughs> but it's also, you know, it's also just, it's love. It's tarot love. It's love of community. Anyway. Um, the woman posting the deck, it was, she's pretty new to tarot and she had been enjoying this vintage deck and then realized that it was pretty rare and sort of thought, oh, I want to, <laughs> I don't want to play with this anymore. I want, I want it to go into someone else's hands. So, um, Marissa, thank you. It's in my hands and, uh, and I want to share it with all of you. Um, okay. So first of all, um, the Morgan Greer, I have a number of vintage Morgan Greers. I have a, a I think I have a couple of blue boxes and one of the um, uh, U.S. games, early U.S. game versions that came in, that comes in the sort of purple tuck box. Um, is it is it purple? Purple blue? I take I tend to take all my decks that I want to play with out of their boxes, so then I forget what the and I store the boxes. I keep the boxes, but I put the decks in bags because I want to play with them. So sometimes then I forget <laughs> what the boxes look like. Anyway. The Morgan Greer that I work with, right, is a brown box one. So an early, probably 1979, um, an early edition of this deck. And it has, what I love about the brown box, besides the brown box itself, but I love the backings, this sort of mottled blue, sort of watercolor blue. Um, the cardstock for the, all of the early editions is really similar. It's kind of a, a nice, very, um, very familiar sort of that hefty, sort of 1970s, 1980s cardstock that you see on a lot of U.S. Games decks, you see it on Morgan Press decks. Um, it has a nice weight to it, a nice sheen to it, sort of varnish. Um, and with the early, the vintage Morgan Greers, um, the backs, there are four, I think, four different designs for the backs. So, and it's a little bit random I think, although I've never really studied where the designs appear on which cards, if there's a, a rhythm to it or a reason to it, but I think there's this backing with the, the five across and the little, the little, how many points is that? Seven pointed star there. Um, and that little, the one down there. And then there's this back. They're not reversible, right? There's this back, and there's this one with that little little star there. I think, again, I've never really done a very systematic study of the backs of these decks, but they differ. And if you buy the Morgan Greer today, the images will look like the images have looked since 1979. And the cardstock may be, may be pretty good, depending on what U.S. Games is doing these days. But the backs will be a darker blue, and the pattern of the stars will all be constant. It will be the same pattern on all, on all 78 cards. Anyway, 
My vintage brown box deck, I love it. Today, my deck arrived from Marissa, and it's a blue box, right? But this is the blue box with the bordered backs, okay? And I, if I were sensible, I would bring out another blue box deck and compare it to that, but you know, <laughs> I'm not sensible, so, ah, uh, oh well. Okay, so let's, let's crack it open, shall we? It has the, this, this smells slightly like tobacco, which actually I don't mind. Um, I, I used to smoke a lot. I loved smoking. Any, any former smokers or current smokers out there? Ugh, cigarettes, man. They were my best friend. Anyway, so I don't, I don't mind. When I'm sniffing a deck and it smells like cigarettes, it doesn't bother me too much. So it has the, um, the little fold-out book. It's not a book. It's a fold-out. Um, and I think this is pretty standard across all of the box versions of the deck. Um, it's a Dobbs Ferry address. Okay, and now the deck! Oh. Okay, so it has the darker blue, the darker, darker blue backing. Uh, let me just look at the... And it has the four different designs for the back. But it has that darker blue backing. Ooh, the cardstock. Uh, it's a little thinner than the brown box. Still feels really similar to other blue boxes, but a little bit thinner. Um, a little, a little more sheen to it. Definitely, you know, this cardstock is like mm, the perfect, perfect cardstock. But, uh, but this is nice. And here we go. With the black borders, I, I sort of expected that the cardstock was going to be thinner. It's a later edition of the deck. Yeah, it's definitely, you can definitely feel it. Okay, here we go. Check it out, people. All right, I'm just going to, I'm just going to go through them. Um, oh, sorry, lighting sucks. Um, you can't really see the lemniscate over his head. really similar. This this version may be a little bit desaturated. Of course you lose some of the detail, like you can see how the, the pillar um, to her right, <laughs> everything's reversed in my iPad. You can see how the pillar is cut off a little bit. So the um, size of the image is exactly the same. It's just sacrificed some of the image for the border. The color saturation is almost identical. Really, very little difference. You know, this is, I mean, this is a borderless deck. You know, that's, this is a borderless deck. So seeing it with the borders, um, it doesn't add anything in my estimation. It doesn't make it work better. Although, you know, we're so used to, I think, um, the chariot is the image that's on the cover of the tuck box version of this deck. So we're so used, I think, to seeing this framed. So in the chariot with the border, it kind of makes more sense. But, yeah, you lose, you lose a chunk of the image. Oops. Oh, man. I mean, I prefer it without the border, no question. But <laughs> am I thrilled to have the bordered version of the deck? Of course. Oh my God, of course. Now, just a word about the borders. So, um, you know, they're, they're uneven, right? They're, they're not like neat, tidy borders. They carry the aesthetic of the, like of the backs, right? This kind of free form. Oh, isn't that interesting? I just realized that the backing, it really is kind of random. This is both temperance cards, but they have different backs. 
Anyway, it carries the freeform aesthetic into the border. And of course, these are old cards, so they're a little chipped, but oh, they're in really nice shape. I'm wondering if the border is, is yeah, see, it's really free form on all of these. It's like, it's clearly hand-drawn. Oh, God. I love this deck. This deck just, it kind of, you know, it doesn't get, it doesn't get the um, kind of glory, I think. Oh, look at, I mean, this moon card, right, with his little tail the crustacean's little tail under the water and the, the ripples in the water and just the colors, the color of the sky. So that, um, that's a pen line across the moon. But you know, this deck is the, the this border deck is in really good shape. That is a minor, a minor flaw. The triumphant judgment card. Yes! <laughs> we are facing you. We are not facing the angel. We are facing you. This deck has such a, you know, it's such a, it has such a triumphant sort of, you know, 1970s, 1980s vibe to it. It's so lush and plump. The lovers, you know, the lovers to me are like, the quintessential Morgan Greer card, right? You know. Oh. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. Ooh, I like I like some, some of these cards the border does set it off, I got to say. You know, this has a nice impact on the pentacles. The coloring No, that's just my lighting. The coloring's really similar. So, what's the difference between these two decks, between my vintage brown box and my vintage uh, border blue box? Cardstock. But I think that the cardstock, I'd have to pull out one of my vintage blue boxes to be sure, but I think this is the same cardstock that we find in the other blue boxes. So the cardstock is thinner. The backs are dark blue instead of light blue. But otherwise, it's just the borders. And as I'm looking at the colors and the saturation, it's really constant. You know, like maybe his cheeks are a little ruddier, but mostly it's really constant. I love this deck. This also, this card with his mustache, it's so, you know, 1979. So is it 70s or is it 80s? It's like in that, in that moment, <laughs> in the moment between the two. Um, a lot of sex, a lot of rock and roll, a lot of disco. You know, a lot of um, exoticization of people of color. One of the things about this deck that's problematic is that kind of invocation of the dark skin beauty, you know, so, yeah, this, you know, the, here's another one that has a little bit of a pen mark on it. Sometimes that can be removed with a little bit of um, nail polish remover, but I don't want to risk it. I mean, these cards, they still feel like they haven't really been used much. Yeah, so, you know, the, <laughs> the border, it's, you know, it's not even remotely even, right? That's, but that's part of what makes this, this deck what it is. I am not um, what they call a completist, you know, someone who um, has to have all of, the, all of the versions of a particular deck um, or a particular book in my library. 
I don't feel like I need, I don't feel like my collection needs to have that. Um, so it's not like I was dying to get this to complete my edition, uh, my collection of the Morgan Greer, but I just really wanted to see it. You know, what, what does this deck look like when it has borders? And what's, what I think is so interesting is that the borders are so organic and um, freeform and incomplete. <laughs> oh, I, lo I love the ace. I love how the border sets off the flowing of that card. Okay, am I going to go all the way through? I guess I am. I mean, you've seen, you all have seen this deck. Oh, I like it in the Four of Cups, too. I think this deck does despair really well. Like, I love the Five of Cups, and I'm really fond of the Eight of Cups. The sort of despair, despondency, moving on. This feels so iconic to me. It's the it's the image I have on my bag. And this version of the nine, it just is like uh yeah. It's like you know, one of the I mean this card is I find this card really annoying in the Wade Smith imagery, and this one really brings that out. And then the <laughs> Yeah, I love it. Oh, and just such a sweet page of cups. And here too, I, I love how the, the border sets it off. I love, I love the helmet on the Knight of Cups with the wings. Um, in general, in fact, of the court cards in this deck the I think the cup the the cups are the most um, completely realized court in the Morgan Greer I think they did a really beautiful job you know how many three of swords just are the three of swords it's like yeah, a heart with three swords through it. There you go. This deck with the way that it tends to um, do close-ups, basically. And then you take a card like the Five of Swords, you know, which is such a card about positionality, you know, the positions that one has in the world of um, zero-sum game of, you know, there is a winner, there is a loser. Um, and you get this um, close-up, but it still gives you that sense of perspective. It still gives you that depth of, you know, winner, real, real loser, somewhere in between. Um, and the setting sun, the blood red setting sun, the ambiguity of the central figure. And here too, I think the the border really frames that image. Oh, I love the border here as well. It's very cinematic, this deck. You know, it really, I think, yeah, that's um, not all of the cards, but there's a, particularly in the swords, this sense of having captured a moment. And then it gets to the Nine of Swords, which is just like a little bit like, fight the power, you know, this image of oppression, which doesn't really convey the internal quality of that oppression, but and there we go, page. Knight. This Knight of Swords is interesting because it's sort of highlighting um, 
his cruelty, really. He's the only court figure that has blood on his hands. Um, and this Queen of Swords, which just, I, I'm not, it doesn't speak to me, Queen of Swords, is pretty. So again, I think the cups, courts in this deck are the most powerfully realized. Okay, yeah, the Morgan Greer, <laughs> bordered edition. Thanks to beautiful friends in the tarot community who have helped me get this baby home. Whoops. <laughs> All right, you guys. Thank you so much for watching and thank you for your practice. Love to you all. Good night.